Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mark Hackett, a lecturer at Curtin University uh, and welcome to one of our many chemistry labs here at our Curtin Bentley campus. In today's experiment we'll be investigating the reducing and oxidizing properties of sulfur dioxide. So welcome everyone uh, in the experiment today. We are going to be looking at some of the oxidizing and reducing properties of sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a really important chemical, particularly in the food and beverage industry, where it can be used either as an antioxidant or a chemical compound to prevent food and beverage spoilage from bacterial or fungal growth. We'll be liberating sulfur dioxide by adding some sulfuric acid to our sodium sulfite that will decompose to produce sulfur dioxide. We'll capture that sulfur dioxide with our delivery tube here. And we're going to then pass that sulfur dioxide through to solutions of potassium dichromate, potassium permanganate, and sodium sulfide. So the colour of these solutions should change once sulfur dioxide is added. So we're going to see the reaction taking place by the colour change. We also have some blue and red litmus paper. And so we'll see the effect of sulfur dioxide on the colour of this litmus paper. And we also have two test tubes here with some fresh apple. So to one of these, we'll bubble sulfur dioxide in and stopper, and the other we'll leave exposed to air. And then we can check tomorrow in 24 hours time whether browning has occurred in both, or if the sulfur dioxide has been able to prevent the browning that we all know will occur in the apple if left out exposed on the bench. Okay, so before I add our two molar sulfuric acid into approximately two grams of sodium sulfite. I'm going to light our Bunsen burner. I'm now going to add in enough sulfuric acid to cover the solid here by about, by about two centimetres. Put the sulfuric acid safely to the side. I'm going to stop her, our vessel and I'm going to apply heat. So we know the sulfur dioxide has been produced when this starts to boil. So I can see bubbles being produced. So I'm going to introduce the litmus paper to the open end. And the litmus paper is turning pink. I'm now going to stop her this into the potassium dichromate and we should start to see bubbles coming in. And we're doing this in the fume hood because we're producing sulfur dioxide. And we should see a color change going from orange to dark green, which is happening now. We have a swirl. I'm now going to bubble this through the potassium permanganate. This is purple pink color. And we should now see again a dramatic color change. It's now gone to a colorless or clear color. I'm going to try this litmus test one more time. And it's gone pink really quickly. But no change on the pink litmus paper. So now through the sodium sulfide, just starting off as colorless and is going a cloudy yellow color. Now it's changed to white. I'm now going to bubble the remaining sulfur dioxide through one of the tubes of apples. And it will stay overnight with sulfur dioxide in the tube instead of air. So we'll do this for two minutes. And then we'll stop her. And it will stay overnight with sulfur dioxide in the tube instead of air. So this tube here, I'm going to take the stopper out and we're going to leave that open. When we come back tomorrow, 24 hours later, the sulfur dioxide should have prevented the apple from browning, whereas in air, the apple will have browned. As you can see, the apple that was exposed to sulfur dioxide hasn't browned, whereas the apple incubated with air overnight has browned. 
We hope you have enjoyed learning about the reducing and oxidizing properties and ability of sulfur dioxide today. If you would like to find out more about studying chemistry or a science degree at Curtin, please head to study.curtin.edu.au.